Welcome back. Now we're catching up with famed New York restaurateur Eric Bromberg, who along with his brother Bruce turned Blue Ribbon into an internationally recognized and respected restaurant empire. Now at the end of the day, Eric likes to trade in the hustle and bustle of restaurant life for his serene and comfortable retreat in Newtown. His farmhouse style home is filled with natural light and country views, but let's face it, it's the kitchen we're all curious about. Here's Eric with the tour. Hi, I'm Eric Bromberg, chef and owner of Blue Ribbon Restaurants in New York City, and welcome to my house here in Newtown, Connecticut. This is our living room. This is where I like to come after work and relax and recharge. This room is great in the summer when it's full of light and you see the greenery outside, but in the winter with the warmth of the fire, it's really cozy and comfortable as well. My first love isn't actually cooking, it's music. This room is filled with instruments to really bring that energy to my life. What makes a great dining room to me is the dining room table and its chairs. So the focus of this room is really centered around this beautiful handmade walnut table. It really has kind of the simple function of maybe a library table. For artwork, we have one focal point, which is an original art piece by Ruth Newquist, who lives in Newtown right near me. She did a watercolor of the original Blue Ribbon, and that puts together kind of the spirit of what Blue Ribbon is to me. After living in New York for 20 years, really something important to us was to have an outdoor space that felt like an extension of our home. While traveling through France as a kid, I saw lots of outdoor spaces where there was some definition to kind of make it feel like a room, and that was really the inspiration for here. We have this, this open pergola, we have the wisteria growing, and it completely forms a canopy and gives you the feel of an outdoor dining room. We wanted really a big and dramatic table, and this table, it's almost five feet wide, so for feeding family style, we can put all the platters and the trays right down the middle of the table and everybody can reach it very comfortably. This is the kitchen. It's actually the exact same dimensions as the original Blue Ribbon kitchen. We have marble countertops, white oak cabinets that have been stained to walnut, and a really significant marble island. I filled the kitchen with memories and aspects of my culinary journeys and travels. This is my grandmother's mix master. It was like a special thing for us when we were kids to be able to make the whipped cream. And all these things really bring the spirit and remind me why cooking is so important and why family is so important. And now let's get to the food. I wanted to make a meal that was perfect for eating with friends and family, that was easy to prepare. We're gonna do a spinach salad, a roast strip loin, and then I have some little baby potatoes that we're gonna cook in the pan under the steak. When I was designing this kitchen, it was really important for me to have the ability to cook with as many different heat sources as I could use. And so I can cook on live fire or on a gas fire with a pot hanging. I can cook anything on a rotisserie and then also I have three other ovens, so there's not too many ways I can't cook something. Here's our piece of meat. Now this is a New York strip. It's prime, you can see the marbling. I'm gonna cook it on the rotisserie because it's exciting to me and I love the way it looks. All right, so I'll take the piece of meat and I'm gonna season it liberally with kosher salt and cracked pepper. You just sprinkle it on and it magically makes perfect roast. Want to be sure to get the edges so the end cuts are really delicious. So at this counter we have space for six stools here. Lots of times when we're cooking, everybody sits at the counter here. You can kind of prep all around the table so it really gets everybody involved and engaged in a central activity. Now, whether you're roasting in a rotisserie like I am here or in an oven, it's always great to put some vegetables underneath. As the fat drips down, it kind of cooks in that delicious drippings that come off. The spinach is really very simple. And then I have a variety of tomatoes from the garden. We have this, which is a lemon or lime juicer, but I'm gonna use this to juice a tomato. So tomatoes are a perfect thing for vinaigrette because they have acidity and a little sweetness. I'm gonna put 
a little spoonful of mustard in, a little bit of chopped shallot, a little of the salt and pepper again, and then I'll just put vinegar. We have some really good olive oil. And I add that in about two to one for vinegar to olive oil. And then I will just put the top on and shake. I'm gonna let the steak cook for a little while. It takes about an hour and then we'll see you outside for lunch. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my house in Newtown, Connecticut. Right now, I got my eye focused on that end cut. I'm gonna sit down and enjoy this. Thanks for coming.